financial freedom is king i don't know what financial freedom means for you but for me financial freedom is having the control over my financial situation and being able to make choices that align with my values as well as my goals without feeling limited by money or just constantly having that worry in general this could be you but for most people financial freedom is defined by having um, a lot of money in the bank that could be through um, having investments investments to cover their life expenses to help them live comfortably without relying on paycheck to paycheck or even the worry about that for you this might be the ability to have enough money to be able to leave enough money to be able to live the life that you want without any constraints or even worrying about any finances in general or things like the abilities to be able to pursue your passion and your interest without any financial constraints but whatever the case might be for you or whatever your definition of financial freedom is we all have our different reasons for why we want this so in this video i'm going to be sharing five tips that could help you towards financial freedom if that's something that you're interested in and if this sort of video also appeals to you don't forget to uh, like and also subscribe so we can reach more people okay so let's jump right in i read a quote by benjamin franklin which reads money never made a man happy yet nor will it the more a man has the more he wants this could be true in a lot of sense that the more that people have the more they want depending on your level of self-discipline as well as the things or even how motivated you are about things or how ambitious you might be about wanting to achieve certain things in life and i'll never advise anyone to stop wanting money because the chances are if you're watching this video you probably don't have enough of that but what i will say is this you can never go wrong strategically planning for your financial freedom i believe in budgeting i also believe in strategy and doing all of that restfully and sustainably have money work for you rather than the other way around focusing on acquiring assets as well as investing in things and adventures that will generate money over time you can never go wrong having this as one of your strategies or some of the ways that you would want to strategize towards getting to your financial freedom don't be that person that spends all of their money on liabilities once money hits their account the norm isn't working a nine to five even though this is what we've been told and indoctrinated in us from say our childhood this isn't the norm or at least it shouldn't be the norm there are things that you can do there is life beyond a nine to five or just constantly being tied to that paycheck and if you think about it, it isn't right that you should have to uh, rely on or just work a nine to five and just be in a job that you are unhappy with till the day you die even though society has uh, let us believe or conditioned us to think that this is the way that it should be learn and consider ways to uh, increase and build wealth and but also owning equity wherever you are in any situation that you find yourself let's jump into some of the points i want to explore today towards getting to your financial freedom the first one being your perspective and thinking around money how many times have you been told that making money is tied to employment go to school graduate and get a job work that job until you retire and die i've done all of the above except retire and die it brings me back to the point i'm really trying to explore to change your perspective about how you think and feel about money it is not bad to have or talk about money after all some say money does not buy you happiness but lack of it definitely and certainly buys you misery Number two is impact. Find things that you reconnect and you are good at. And with a combination of this, you definitely can see yourself driving your path to financial freedom. Think about the world's most successful people. For example, your favorite artists and why you love to sing to their song and what impact their music brings to your life. These people, these favorite artists, are solving problems in ways that other people can't so they concoct and they put the songs and lyrics together that you enjoy singing and it makes an impact into your life when you sing these songs you feel um, lifted your mood is lifted depending on what you're feeling at the time and those sort of impact to a lot of extent has driven some of these successful artists to financial freedom in that when uh, we consider perhaps the financial realms that they find themse themselves in they're very much well off 
And that's as a result of you and I supporting the cause that they've re reconnected with and the impact that that has on our lives. We're happy to give them all of our money and enrich them, whether that be financially, but in any case, driving them towards their financial freedom. So you too can do the same in reconnecting with what you're good at and being able to offer impact. Impact more people with your offering, but also find tangible ways to be able to add value and money will find a way of finding you. Because this input and impact that you create has a direct proportional effect into your output. Number three is to create your path. Society tells us that we are a collective, but how can this be really? We go to work and we meet bosses and colleagues at the companies where we work at. Some of these colleagues, as well as your bosses that you work with, also perpetuate and create this ideology that we're all family, we're one big family. How many times have you heard this? Whether that be in an interview setting where they describe the company or where you would work as being a family, which is just something that is very unnatural. You know, they're not your family. The company is not your family. And when you hear this about being a family at a company where you're meant to work, the first thing I think to myself, I feel, I think, are we really though? Really? Why is my feel that being a groupie is cool? Perhaps at your work where you feel by being a groupie keeps you, uh, it keeps you there for a long time or you have job stability or job security, so to say. Do not forget these same people or companies that say we are a family will be the first to let you go they will leave you out on your ears once things go left should they take a hit on their uh, yearly profit you'll be the first to be let go when i meet people for me i feel like there's just something endearing about someone that is very confident they're very self-aware they know themselves, they know who they are. They also know that they can triple their earnings at any time and therefore they do not need to be tied down to a family company, so to say. Number four is frugal. Frugal doesn't always get you there. And I know there's a whole community or even a whole content, a whole leap of content on its own, just talking about uh, this particular subject around being frugal. For me, I feel this is a give and take, but I definitely wouldn't uh, lean too much on the side of being frugal. How many times have you been told, save on that avocado toast, don't spend another penny in Starbucks getting coffee, save on Tesco's shopping back, etc. All of these sort of things. But yes, every little helps, but I feel these are the smaller things to be concerned, for you to be concerning yourself about. Think about it. If you bought one coffee for about £4.50 every week for a whole year from Costa, how much is that going to save you? That's about just over £230, I think about £236. But when it comes to saving, and although this helps that for a whole year you've been able to save £234 or thereabout, will this dramatically change your life or drive you towards the path of becoming a, a millionaire or even being financially free in the bigger scheme of things? I don't think so. I definitely feel that there are so many other ways that you can focus or so many other things and areas that you can focus attention on rather than de deprive yourself of that Starbucks coffee. And I love this famous quote by Warren Buffett and he says, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you would work until you die. Very morbid, it's very direct, but I love it because this is just emphasizing what I feel already and what I know already that really uh the idea isn't around just saving four pound fifty on a cup of coffee because that's not just the only way to go in terms of trying to save this wouldn't make much of a difference to say your bank account there are other things and other ways that you can think about generating income and generating money passively why is tracking finance is a no-brain and i feel it's an essential thing in terms of helping you on your self-development self-improvement and to grow from day to day I feel that you also don't want to overdo it by being overly frugal or just frugal in general, especially being frugal about the little things, as well as constantly just denying yourself of the little things that you that would bring you enjoyment or happiness even. So whilst you're not making money yet in your sleep, or if you're not doing that already right now, treat yourself to that Starbucks coffee when next you walk past one. Go in, enjoy the ambience, take a seat. Whilst you're there, reflect reflect and think about how you can elevate and come up with a plan a plan that perhaps will get you to the point where you're passively earning money as opposed to trying to save four pound fifty on a cup of coffee
as you're thinking and drumming up ideas, I hope one of them that you come up with is an idea on how to invest. There are so many contents and so many contents guru talking about investment and I wouldn't even dive into that area because it's such a huge topic that even I'm still getting educated on because I feel I could be doing more on that path. However, it's never too late in whatever situation or circumstance or whatever age that you are in life. Sometimes there is the belief that you can only make money once you get into your 40s, your 50s, your 60s and beyond. But I disagree. I disagree because with my experience in life, I've come to realize that there isn't a linear path to financial freedom or even to when you can start making money. Some people might hit it at 18, other people at 22, some at 55. It just depends. There isn't an exact time or an exact framework to follow to financial freedom. But there are things obviously that you can definitely put in place to get you there faster and quicker. And one of them being investment. For example, if a 30 year old now invested 200 pounds for the next 35 years, which as of when they get to 65 on a 7% yearly interest in return, they will be getting just over 360,000 pounds. Make that 500 pounds over the same period of time and they will, be, they will be getting a return of over 900 pounds. But the magic happens at say 600 pounds. So a 30 year old investing um, 600 pounds every month for the next 35 years, they will be having over a million pounds. And we're not trying to sort of dig into that to sort of understand some of the nuances around there or how they could have generated more or less. But also because with investment, there is the power and the magic of compound interest. And that is where you make all the money that you need to make to get to, to financial freedom. But obviously, this is just another section and another area. There's so many things you can do to get you to financial freedom. At the point that you find yourself right now, as you watch this, the key is to take action. Take action and find ways to incorporate what we've been talking about in your day-to-day -day life. And incorporate them in ways that involves having a healthy mindset around money so it doesn't consume and control you 24-7. Learn some philosophies about money and also understand that it can be used as a tool to help you achieve some of the things that you want in life, such as financial freedom. As Zig Ziglar said, Money wouldn't buy you happiness, but everybody wants to find out for themselves. I'm definitely in the camp of people that want to find out for themselves because ultimately for me, financial freedom is also about, about having the freedom to make choices that bring me fulfillment as well as happiness rather than being driven by financial constraints. I hope you find this helpful today. And if you enjoy this, there's also another video here about money, beliefs and mindset.